practicing, honing skills. All to get to basketball's ultimate stage, the place where the stakes are highest. The place where greatness is authenticated. That place is the NBA Finals. The Chicago Bulls are already a huge part of this league's history. Five NBA titles this decade and reaching deep for one more run. The Chicago Bulls are kings of the NBA, but someday, someone will dethrone them. The Utah Jazz came close last year, battling through six tough games. This year they're back, rested, ready, and with home court advantage. Determined to end the Bulls' run here and write their own chapter in NBA Finals history. The wait is over. The NBA Finals are here. Game one, next. This is the NBA on NBC. The 1998 NBA Finals. Tonight, it's game one. The Chicago Bulls versus the Utah Jazz. The Delta Center in Salt Lake City, one of the loudest buildings in all of sports, a place where the Jazz enjoy a distinct home court advantage and where a sellout crowd is ready to rock the Raptors for game one of this rematch in the NBA Finals. Good news for Jazz fans. In the past quarter century, prior to this one, there have been five rematches in the NBA Finals. In every instance, the team that lost the first time came back to win the second. And welcome to Game 1, everybody. I'm Bob Costas. We start with this news. The Chicago Bulls tell us that Dennis Rodman suffered torn ligaments, or at least strained ligaments, in his right thumb late in Game 7 of the Eastern Conference Finals against the Pacers. He had been expected to start Game 1 of this series. He will not. He is available. He will play. Tony Kukoc will start. We'll have to keep an eye on Dennis, check his minutes, see how effective he is in this all-important matchup. They're looking to him to slow Carl Malone at least a little bit. Jim Gray will talk with Rodman during our next segment. Now there is a widespread feeling that of the six times the Chicago Bulls have been to the NBA Finals, this year's Utah Jazz are the team best equipped to derail them. They are not awed by the Bulls. They are rested. They are ready. And they believe that this time around they can do it. This Utah Jazz team includes two of the all-time greats, certain first ballot Hall of Famers, John Stockton and Carl Malone. They have played together for 13 years. No teammates have ever played on the same team so long, whether they were scrubs, Hall of Famers, or anywhere in between, without winning at least one NBA title. And coming close a year ago was small solace. Yes, we were disappointed. We were, we were excited about getting there and excited about, about uh, having the opportunity because of the closeness of it, but, but we did lose it, so you can't find much satisfaction in that. If you're writing a, a storybook ending, you want to have an opportunity to play the team that beat you last year and won the title. And in this business, sometimes uh, you get your wishes. Sometimes you don't. Uh, we was able to get our wish, and uh, we're looking forward to it. So, too, are basketball fans everywhere, including Isaiah Thomas and Doug Collins. Well, Zeke, the more things change, the more they remain the same. For the Utah Jazz, here's the question. What do you do with Michael? But Michael Jordan poses so many problems for the defense. When you guard him with a smaller player, such as Jeff Hornacek, he can just turn around and elevate and shoot right over you. Then Chicago will come back with the big three, Pippen, Kukoc, and Jordan. Now, you can't leave Jordan, so when they double-team Pippen in the low post, Kukoc is there for the long three. So you say, okay, we'll come double-team you with size. We'll bring Carl Malone. But you see Dennis Rodman on the offensive glass, 
and a weak side offensive player, Tony Kukoc, comes up with the offensive rebound. Then last year in the finals, they came from the top and they left Steve Kerr open for the wide open Jay. Now, Michael Jordan has torched Utah this season, averaging close to 35 points a night. And when you double team him, he frees up on the offensive glass for at least 20 shots. Now, what do you do with Michael Jordan? That's the question that the league has been trying to figure out for a very long time. Bob? And maybe the answer is let him get his the way they did with Shaq in the Western Conference Finals as they swept L.A. Shaq got off, but nobody else did, and they won in four straight. I'll tell you one thing, though, guys. Every high school coach in America has to love this series because these are late 90s teams who play such great fundamental basketball. They play team ball. They move it around, and there is nothing more basic and yet nothing executed any closer to perfection than the Utah Jazz pick and roll. Bob, the beauty of the screen roll is that you take what the defense gives you, and Utah does it better than anybody in the league. You're going to see this time Michael Jordan at the top chooses not to rotate, so Stockton's going to drive the baseline. He gets the double team and finds Carl Malone sliding to the open area, and he hits the open shot. So Chicago makes an adjustment. They say, we're going to rotate to Carl Malone, and we're going to take the shot away from him. So Malone this time becomes the passer. Stockton to Malone, over to Hornacek, and he gets the open shot. Chicago says, we'll try it another way. We'll run longly and stay with uh, Malone out on the perimeter. So Stockton reads it. He drives baseline. Now Hornacek is open in the corner for the three-point shot. Regardless of what they do, they react and they get great shots. But the centerpiece of their offense is Carl Malone. When he throws up big numbers, you see in the wins, 28 and a half points, they win. When he does it, they lose. He needs to have big numbers if they're going to find a way to win this championship, Bob. In last year's final against the Bulls, these were his numbers. 24 points around 10 rebounds. Not bad. Shot 44%. But he didn't come through in some crucial moments. And ultimately, he graded his own performance as a C+. How close were the Jazz a year ago as they lost four games to two? Well, except for game two when they lost by a big margin in Chicago. In their other three defeats, they actually led 129 of the 144 minutes. And as you look at the overall numbers in the series, there's very little to choose. The Bulls were simply able to make more big plays in more of the big moments, and that's why they claim their fifth NBA title. The Jazz think they can make the little adjustments and the big plays down the stretch that will change the outcome this time. And as the buildup continues before the tip-off for Game 1, the Jazz have one more item, and that would be, from the world of boxing, the tuxedoed Mr. Michael Buffer. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. For the thousands in attendance and the hundreds of millions watching around the world. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, let's get ready to rumble! I feel underdressed without a cummerbund. Dating back to Seattle in 96, the Bulls have lost four of their last five road games in the finals. But their one victory in that string was a huge one, game five here, to take a 3-2 lead back to Chicago a year ago. The officials are Steve Jabby, Ron Garretson, and Bennett Salvatore. Chicago ball to start it. Russell on Pippen. Michael, jumper on Hornacek. Off the back iron. Loose ball to Longwood. Kukoc open. And it comes up short. Malone takes it the other way. Stockton on the drive. Dishes to Foster. Stockton gives them a press 24 with the rebound. Now, Scotty Pippen is going to guard Foster and roam around a lot. You see him right now on Stockton. That's only because they got mismatched on the rebound. Malone's first shot. Doesn't get the roll. Foster trying to follow. Knocked away cleanly. Out of bounds to Utah. Jordan and Malone each missed their first shot. And there's a whistle as this contact away from the ball between Russell and Kukos. That'll be a two-shot foul because the ball was not inbounded. So Brian Russell will step to the line and get two free throws. 
Uh, Doug, the tempo of this game will be very fast because you have a lot of speed players out on the floor. Chicago is going with the smaller lineup of Tony Kukoc, and Utah is going with the smaller lineup of Foster and Russell. So the speed should favor Chicago. Ryan Russell averaged only nine points a game during the regular season, down from the year before. But in the playoffs, he's really picked it up in all aspects of his play. He's covering Pippen now. He'll also be on Jordan at various times during the series. Hornacek has that unenviable task right now. Five on the shot clock. Kukoc. Out of the corner, it's Harper. Somebody's got to shoot it. Harper will. And it's 2-1 Chicago. We know that's the guy that's going to have to make jump shots. As the Jazz double teams in the post, they'll make Harper prove that he can hit that shot on a consistent basis. Stockton, the NBA's all-time leader in assists and steals. Bounces to Malone, guarded by Longwood. He's 0 for 2. Kukoc has it. Bulls looking to run. Harper, the trailer, tries another one. Same result. Harper's two jumpers put Jerry Sloan's team behind 4-1. to one. And we've played a bit less than two minutes. Utah has missed its first four field goal attempts. That's the end of that string as Stockton waltzes in off the left side of the lane. He is so good at getting the double team, reading it, make you get back to your own man, and then driving the ball right up your back. Malone on Longley. Luke spinning toward the basket. Malone knocked it away, and it went off Longley's leg. It belongs to the Jazz. When you're a big man and you're in the low post, you can't put it down below your waist, or Carl Malone will slap it right out of your hand. That's his favorite defensive move. Stockton looking for Malone. Longley pokes it away. Malone chases it to the corner. Now Stockton again. Driving baseline. Hornacek. Through a crowd. Tough shot. Pops out. Michael has it in the open court, and Russell fouls him. You could almost feel there that Russell was afraid Michael was going to get a breakaway. Did not want him to get excited early in this game, so he took the foul. But Russell's going to have to be very care careful. They're going to need him on the floor, Bob. He's got to use his fouls very wisely. Pippen, his first shot, rolls around and doesn't drop, Hornacek has it, ahead to Malone, to the hoop, and Utah claims the lead. For a man so big and strong, Malone runs the floor so well, even as he approaches age 35. Jordan hands the turnaround over Hornacek. Now that time they didn't come double team Jordan in the low post. He took his time and was able to elevate over Hornacek. Michael's first basket of this year's NBA Finals. Pippen got in the passing lane. Cuts in front of Hornacek. Now it's one on two, but Scotty takes it to the hole himself for the emphatic slam. See, Doug, you know, Utah likes to run that scissor cut, and when you run that against Chicago, they're so long that they just switch all of that. Scotty Pippen switched it with Jordan, stepped out and made the steal. Stockton's jumper. Got it. There's that screen roll we talked about. They forced a baseline, and Malone stepped up and screened baseline. No one stepped out, and Stockton can make that shot. He's a 50% shooter. Foster picked up a foul. It's his first. Bulls inbound, and Kukoc throws up a little run of it short. Tries it again. Same result. Out of bounds. Last touch by Foster, and the Bulls will have another crack at it. No second shot opportunities. Now, Greg Foster's had his hands on about three rebounds. He's trying to get him with one hand. you got to go up and snatch those things with two. Who coached red hot in game seven against Indiana? 0 for 3 so far tonight. In fact, he was hot through most of that series against the Pacers. An illegal defense now is called against the Jazz. Yeah, they caught Stockton running over, and he's saying that, that they pump fake the ball. Stockton was coming to double team Jordan.
They didn't throw it in, and therefore he was illegal. Foster on Kukoc. Into the lane for Pippen. Up top, Harper. Kukoc for three. Rattles in and out. Longley battling for the rebound with Malone, and Carl saves it into Hornacek. Malone, underneath Foster. Contact, but they let it go. No foul. Back comes Chicago. Pippen thought about a three. Now puts it on the floor and takes it baseline. Throws up a wild shot, no good, and Malone has it. Hornacek the pull-up. Spins out. Loose ball battle. It'll belong to Utah. Take a look at the no call a moment ago. Well, this is such a frenetic pace. I think this favors Utah. You see right now, Greg Foster's going to get the, the dunk, and Scottie Pippen from behind knocks it loose. After that, it's incidental contact. But the pace of this game right now, I think, favors Utah if they can keep it up for 48 minutes. Stopped it, had it knocked away by Harper, but Harper fouled it. That's his first, and we take our first break. And out Foster has it for Utah. Malone with a great pass to a cutting Russell. Good look, and the Jazz in front again, 9-8. See, that time Utah went away from their, their set, and they went into a more passing game set to try to neutralize Chicago's speed. They've been working on Russell. Double team, stopped him, comes over and steals it. No one's done it more in NBA history. Foster might not have expected it, but eventually recovers. Now they'll set it up. Stockton with five on the 24. And his pass finds no one out of bounds in front of the Utah bench, where Jerry Sloan, during the last time out, according to Jim Gray, told his team, wait a minute, you just saw the Bulls beat the Pacers by killing them on the offensive glass, and already, in this first quarter, we've given them four second-chance opportunities. We can't let that happen. Michael against Hornacek, out of bounds to Chicago. See, Doug, you talked about Tony Kukoc missing his first four shots. The thing that impressed me about those four shots is that they were wide open shots. And that's what Michael Jordan is creating. And if Chicago takes their time, they're going to get good looks. And it's just a matter of them knocking down the shot. Stockton out. Isley in. One of the best reserve point guards in the league. Pippen can't finish it off a good pass. Here comes Isley. Hornacek looked for Malone, threw it over his head, and Longley takes it. Pippen, stutter step, into the lane, lays it up and in. A year ago in the finals, Michael averaged more than 30. Pippen, 20 against the Jazz. No other bull averaged more than 8. Bob, the early rust you talked about, though, poor shooting right now by Utah, but more importantly, they're turning the ball over. That's very uncharacteristic of the Jazz. Malone can't get the lead back, but they'll get another chance. And see, that's what the layoff would do to you, Doug. You can't practice emotion and intensity. And what emotion and intensity is, it makes you run a little faster, jump a little higher, and shoot it a little harder. Malone from Isley. Into the lane. And Utah into the lead. But no, it's taken away on the offensive foul. See, what makes Chicago so difficult defensively is that they can move and shut down the driving lanes. They're so quick. You see... Malone has the penetration, but Pippen is there to take the charge. And when you miss a shot, Doug, Jordan can advance the ball, Pippen can advance it. They all can advance the ball for fast break opportunities. Michael, turn around, sandwiched by two defenders, count the basket, plus the foul. Scotty Pippen on the beautiful drive. Remember now, Brian Russell picked up a foul early, so he's got to be very careful. Scotty with a beautiful change of pace, that long swooping stride of his and a finger roll. And then Michael Jordan, I'm a little surprised here that Isley doesn't come down and double team. He reaches in, a little touch foul, three-point play opportunity. He's guarding Harper. you got to go help make him get the ball up. The foul is on Isley, his first, and Jordan completes the three-point play. See, when I think of Utah, Doug, I think of a half-court team that executes. I don't think of them as a fast-breaking team, and Chicago has got them into a speed, fast-breaking type of game. 
Russell lobs for Malone. Longley got a hand on it. Malone recovers. Pippen blocked it, but there's a foul. And Malone will come to the free throw line where he shot 83% in the Western Conference Finals against the Lakers and 76% for the year. But you'll recall that he shot free throws poorly in last year's final against the Bulls, and that's part of the reason why Utah lost it. NBA.com is at the NBA Finals, providing complete coverage of the Jazz and Bulls. You can log on now and join a live cybercast with NBA and WNBA stars. That's the NBA.com arena. That's what the page looks like tonight. Doug we asked Carl Malone what did he work on over the summer and he said he worked on his mid-range J because he thought that he would be playing lonely and I asked him I said did you work on your free throws over the summer he said no I felt that I'd be confident enough to step up in the finals and make them knocks them both down his two crucial misses at the end of game one in Chicago a year ago led to a Bulls victory a Chicago offensive foul. It's on Luke Longley now. You cannot get him in foul trouble with Rodman's thumb being hurt. He's doing a very good job on Malone in the low post. He's been fronting him, forcing him to step off the block and do everything, facing up about 15 feet away from the basket. So you're going to see an early entrance here by Dickie Simpkins, not Dennis Rodman. Watch, watch Longley move on this screen. Now Russell's going under. He just lowers his shoulder, and that's a foul. Longley out, Simpkins in, Rodman just now returned to the bench. Foster out of the corner. The one-time bull hoists it and misses it. Malone taps it back out to Russell. Foster has got to make himself available to the ball. Scottie Pippen is not even worried about him on the floor. So he's got to find the open area and make the shot. Isley takes it into the lane, throws it up with the right hand, and hits the floater. Meanwhile, Ahmad Rashad tells us that Phil Jackson wanted to put Rodman in, and Dennis hadn't made it back from the locker room to the bench. That's why Simpkins is in. It's one thing to be idiosyncratic. It's another thing to be idiotic. Kukoc, got it. See, where most teams post their big men, Chicago post their guard. Ron Harper posted up against Howard Isley. You had to come double team and Kukoc knocked that wide open Jay down. Out of bounds to the Jazz. Phil Jackson was quoted yesterday as saying, you know, there's a bit too much drama with Rodman not on the bench and it looks like he's not part of the team and I've got to put a stop to that. Well, they didn't put a stop to it in the first quarter here. Although Dennis is sporting a striking new hairstyle for the finals. Russell's jumper from the head of the key is way off. And it was touched last by Utah. You know, Bob, as I look at the score right now, 15 to 13, this does not surprise me. In fact, if I'm Jerry Sloan, I'm probably a little pleased that I'm not further behind the way they're shooting the basketball right now. Chris Morris is guarding Kukoc as Morris, the veteran, makes his first appearance. Pippen with Russell on him. Michael backing in on Hornacek, gets rid of it to Harper, now Kukoc. Inside to Pippen, but a whistle and a three-second violation against Chicago. Now, did Tony pass that shot up because he's not shooting well? Remember, he's the kind of guy, when he gets off early, he's very confident. When he misses some shots, he has a tendency to fade away. Hornacek, Pippen bumps him. Bounces it to Morris. Michael guarding him. Turn around on MJ Short. Simpkins. Off to Harper behind Simpkins' screen, and Harper misses. Morris takes the rebound. Hornacek threw a slew of defenders and missing on the run. Harper will bring it back the other way. Into the lane he goes, drops it off to Pippen, who was fouled. 
I think Chicago has forced Utah to totally change their style of play. They're normally a post-up team pounded inside. Jerry Sloan has made the decision to go small to try to keep up with Chicago's speed. And I don't think they practice this way. This lineup that they have out on the floor, I don't think they even practice with this lineup out on the floor. But Isaiah, they love to run at home. They're a team that loves to fast break here in the Delta Center. They like to get the game up tempo. I think you play right into Chicago's hands when you have a speed game. Pippen missed the first 38 games of the season following surgery on his left foot and actually says that his legs are fresher as a result as we go through the grind of the playoffs. Chicago's lead is four. The last time Chicago played in here, they held the Jazz to only 13 first quarter points. The difference was the score was 35 to 13 at the end of one. And now each team has been hit with one illegal defense warning. This one goes against Chicago. Utah's got to find a way here, Bob, to get the ball to Malone on the block against Dickie Simpkins. If they do double team, space out. You got four good shooters on the floor. Let's find out what they'll do here. Scott Burrell has come off the bench. We still haven't seen Rodman. At least not on the floor. Malone muscles it up on Simpkins, but Dickey held his spot pretty well and pulls in the rebound. Here's Burrell. Pippen poked away by Morris. Scotty picks it up. Working on Hornacek. Up and over the backboard, Utah ball. Carl Malone has him right where he wants him, gets a little excited, loses his footing, and throws a weak shot up at the basket. Dickie Simpkins cannot guard him down. He's got to take his time, power that ball through him. Malone is one of five, and Utah as a team is five of 18. Still Utah ball. You see Ron Harper guarding Howard Isley staying on that right hand. Won't let him come back to get to his shooting pocket to shoot that shot. Isley. Inside Morris for the reverse. Isley penetrated as he blew past Harper. He's lightning quick and then made the good pass. Well, that's a high screen roll. They love to run with Isley. He just cut the ball back when Harper tried to beat the screen. Chicago looking for a two for one. But Pippen misses the pull up three. And then there's a rebounding foul. Simpkins hit with his first. Bob, let's see if they go back to that high screen roll once again. Normally Malone steps up. And Isley tries to run it. Morris will curl in underneath the basket. They'll keep their three shooters spaced. Malone will wait for the last moment, and he'll come up and set the screen for Isley. Game clock overlapping the shot clock by a couple of seconds. Malone from Isley to the basket, and with pure strength, although he took a hit, he maintains control and lays it in. Jordan looking for the last shot. It'll be a three. And he almost banked it in. But Utah pulls even. After a ragged first quarter at the Delta Center, it's tied at 17. Second period begins. Rodman makes his first appearance, as does Judd Bushler, who was so effective in game seven off Phil Jackson's bench against the Pacers. Malone still can't find the range. Here's Randy Brown. The matchups in this series may allow Brown to play more minutes than he did against Indiana. But not if he does that. He threw it away. Isley, pull up, open. Utah has the lead. Talk about rest versus rust. And when you look at the Chicago Bulls in Utah since the end of the regular season, look at the day's rest that Chicago has and that Utah has. They're identical. And the reason is because Chicago finished their series earlier. Early in the playoffs, but not most recently. Most recently, it's Utah with the rest. Now, they love to post Shannon Anderson the moment he comes into the game. He tries a fadeaway on Bushler, but there's a whistle before the shot. 
That's number one on Judge. See, Carl Malone has been taken out of the game. Looks like he's changing shoes. So I don't know if he's a problem with his shoes or if he's just resting his feet. But the, uh, the equipment man has brought out some new shoes for him. Malone and Stockton both on the bench. Shandon Anderson tries it again on Bushler. And hold on, says Steve Jabby. Another foul on number 30, Bushler. This lineup is an interesting group for Chicago. It looks like that Phil Jackson is just trying to buy some minutes because the only guy that can score out there right now is Scotty Pippen. Phil Jackson, who seemed to shorten his bench for most of the Pacers series, has already used 10 players in the first quarter plus here. Morris into Antoine Carr. Another try for the veteran. Blocked away by Simpkins. Now it's Anderson. They go 0 for 3 on this trip. They're just so excited right now. They're rushing everything. <laughs> Randy Brown. Out to Pippen. In the lane for Simpkins. Knocked away and stolen. It's a 4 on 1 break. Isley to Anderson. Utah by four. Rodman's pass to a cutting Bushler was a good feed, but they couldn't finish it. Russell on the run. And suddenly it's a wide open game with the Jazz up by half a dozen. Twenty-three seventeen. now the Jazz lead with 9.35 to go. Michael Jordan back into the game. Steve Kerr in for the first time. Here's Kerr with the ball. And now Rodman, a turnaround jumper that predictably misses. The rebound to Morris. Utah on a 10-0 run, six of it at the start of this quarter. Anderson. Rodman protects the rebound. Well, you can really see they're going inside to Anderson. Kukoc hits the hook. At the other end, it's Morris. Bumps off a defender and lays it in. Isaiah, can't you feel how Utah is trying to run? They're trying to run the Bulls. They're saying they have played a lot of basketball games, an emotional seven-game series. They're really trying to push this tempo at home. Yeah, but, Doug, I think they're making a big mistake by trying to run with Chicago because that's not their character. Who coaches miss is poked out of bounds, touched last by Chicago. The pass to Chris Morris. Michael Jordan tries to take the charge. No call. And Chris Morris, once again off the bench, has been a big factor. Stockton back in, as you see, guarded by Kerr. Anderson around Busher. Little up and under move. And the Jazz in front by eight. to this crowd at the Delta Center. Jordan quiets it just a bit. Stockton into the lane on Kerr. Off balance and got it. Six for Stockton. The chant is, beat the Bulls, beat the Bulls. But first, you have to stop Michael Jordan. I say that's what you talked about at the top of the game. They've got Isley and Stockton in the game together. Isley trying to play Michael, just way too big in the post. Doug, Chicago is getting any type of shot they want. They've missed at least five layups in this first half and wide open jump shots. Nine points now for Jordan, who's guarding Isley. Isley spins around him and can't. Jumper. Hard to believe this kid was caught once by Utah and also by Minnesota and San Antonio. 
Michael Anderson went for the steal, leaving Michael alone, but this time he missed. Stopped it, hurrying back. And might have been fouled by Jordan. That's number one on Michael. They love to post Shannon Anderson. He takes his time. He's got great position against Judd Bushley. Backs him down. The up and under. And the little hoop. And John Stockton, after a nice rest, pushes the ball up the floor. The little floater against Steve Kerr. And now Howard Isley. The guy who's made this second team go all season long buries the jumper against Michael Jordan. Not bad for a former member of the Rockford Lightning of the CBA. This is the NBA on NBC. The matchups, Brian Russell's going to come back in, probably for ice, but he'll put a bigger body on Michael Jordan. <laughs> Isley did a heck of a job, though, while he was in there. And at this point, with John Stockton at age 36, playing less than 30 minutes a game, Isley's performance has been so important for Jerry Sloan. Stockton driving on Kerr. But it spills out. Another rebound for Rodman. Playing with that right thumb heavily bandaged. Dennis, fans taunting him, Kerr pops a baseline jumper and hits it, quick release before Stockton could get there. Well, he can't roam as much with Kerr in the game, he likes to wheel back and double team the basketball, he's got to stay more at home against Kerr. Now it's a four point difference, Carr left alone, can't make the Bulls pay for it, loose ball to Rodman, Pippen with Jordan on his left. His pass knocked away by Stockton, who flips it to Russell, who pushes it up the floor. And it's finished by Shandon Anderson. Stockton just made a smart defensive play. He ran right to Kukoc. He was going to double-team Jordan, but he saw Kukoc standing there, and he ran right back to him and intercepted the pass. Kukoc to Kerr. Head fake, jumper. Missed it off the glass. Pippen has the follow. You know what surprised me on the layup by Shannon Anderson was Rodman was back. He could have taken a foul and made him shoot some free throws. He just backed out of his way. Isaiah let him lay the ball on the basket. I think right now Rodman is very concerned about his thumb. And you know, Doug, when you have an injury, you have a tendency not to be as aggressive as you normally would be. The jumper by Anderson. Kukoc got a piece of it. Make it Morris on the shot. It was Morris's shot, deflected by Kukoc. Russell trying to contend with Michael. And as Anderson came over to help, he collides with Michael and picks up the foul. Now you watch Jordan in the post, he'll take his time, he'll back Russell down, and then the contact will come from Anderson. I think he was guarding Scottie Pippen, and Scottie Pippen ran him right into a foul. Anderson got the worst then, he got the foul. Michael, you don't realize how strong he is, he just punishes defenders. See the rest of Carl Malone got off the floor for six minutes, he got a total of 11 minutes rest, so really double the time that he missed on the floor. Stockton had Kerr by the jersey, and he nods in assent as Steve Javi spots it and hits him with the foul. That's one on John. See, Jerry Sloan cautioned his team early not to come out and expend too much energy because he wanted them to have something in the fourth quarter. Hornacek is back. Let's see if Jordan tries to go right at him. Rodman has it knocked away by Malone. Stockton over. Now it's Kerr. Pippen can't hit it. Neither can Jordan. Back comes Russell. And there's a foul. John Stockton is such a tough guy. You watch the uh, dunk attempt missed. Now watch Stockton step in here. He knows he's going to get smoked by Michael Jordan. Forces him to take his eye off the target and look at him. 
and Michael missed the easy shot. And then Brian Russell came down on the fast break once again. The beautiful pump fake, and he's going to get to the free throw line. But anytime Chicago misses, you can see Utah is trying to get the ball up and down the floor. The foul on Kukoc was his second. The Bulls have four team fouls. The Jazz three with 3.45 remaining in the half. Utah now by five. Another free throw for Russell, who earlier this year lost his starting job to Adam Keith. But he's come on down the stretch and in the playoffs. You know, he signed that big contract in the offseason and then came back and was really sluggish and out of shape and did not perform well early. Same thing with Greg Ostertag. And we've not seen him tonight, but both those guys had a midseason turnaround that really changed the fortunes of this Jazz team. Anderson on Jordan. Hornacek trying to guard Pippen. Coming over to help us Malone to swat it away. Stopped it. Thought about a three. Didn't take it. And now Pippen fouls him. That was a frustration foul on the part of Scottie Pippen. He felt Hornacek fouled him right there in the low post. Malone comes over and gets the block, and you're going to see Scotty. where's the foul? So when he comes down the other end, a little too aggressive on Stockton. Stockton, very smart, knows they're shooting free throws. They'll step up to the line, use Scotty Pippen's aggression against him on that possession. Chicago's now over the limit. John Stocks is a much more effective player at home. Usually plays more minutes. Isley gets a few more minutes on the road. You see his points up, his assists up. He looks very fresh right now in tonight's game. With the rest, I think it's really helped him. Rodman goes out, and Longley, after a long stretch on the bench, comes back in for Chicago. One of two for Stockton. We then tried to go after the rebound, but couldn't quite take it away from Pippen. Scotty Pippen, by the way, is 3 of 9 in this first half after shooting 6 of 18 from the floor in Game 7 against the Pacers. But, of course, he contributes in so many other ways. Bob, I've never seen Chicago miss so many wide-open and easy layups. But how about that one? As Jordan whirls through the defense, seems like almost every member of the Jazz had a look at him before he laid it in. Michael with 13. Luke Longley's doing a very good job, Bob, trying to keep in front of him. He recovers to block Malone's shot, but fouled him. With Dennis Rodman's contribution in this series, a question mark for a variety of reasons. If Longley has to spend long stretches on the bench, who's going to guard Malone? Well, that's a real big problem. And you see he fronts there and does a nice job. But here he comes over the top and gets the foul. You've got to get weak side help on that. You've got to get somebody rotating down from the back. This time it's Michael Jordan. And Michael a little slow reacting to that pass. And Luke picks up the foul. Carl Malone, who turns 35 late next month. Misses the first one. A member of the NBA's first team all-star squad. Ten consecutive years. And this year... He was an all-defensive team selection for the second year in a row. If it weren't for Michael Jordan, how many MVPs might this guy have won? He's finished second in the league to Jordan in scoring five different times. He's led the Western Conference in scoring seven times. So if they split it like by conferences like they do by leagues in baseball, he'd be a seven-time scoring champion. Jordan, quick catch and shoot. 15 for Michael. But the Jazz will live with that because he's not getting to the free throw line. They're going to hope that maybe if he shoots under 50%, they'll limit the offensive rebounds with no double team. And the end result will be a good one for the Jazz. Good pass inside from Hornacek to Malone. Great high-low action there. And Rodman was just completely sealed behind Malone. Yeah, Malone is too big for Rodman. He caught him that time on his back. But Chicago will keep going inside with their big guards. Kerr from Scotty. When he gets a look like that, he won't often miss. Better communication, though. They run that little split at the top. Malone stepped over, and Michael got screened on Stockton. Nobody helped out. Hornacek with Michael on him. Here's Malone. Back to Hornacek. Into the lane. Off-balance shot. Hits the front rim and spills away. You can just see Hornacek has no legs in his shot at all.
Michael, single coverage. And that's what happens. Same spot, same dance, same music. 17 points of the half, 12 of them in this quarter. And Utah asks for time. It's a 20-second timeout with Chicago back to within two. See, Chicago loves to post their big guards, and particularly Michael Jordan, who's one of the best post-up players in the game. Utah fails to double team, so he shoots it right over Sandon Anderson. And they come back to the same spot. Okay, I'll read it. There's no double team. I give you the fake to the baseline, and now I'm going to fade back to the same spot and shoot it the same way. Now you watch Rodman trying to defend Malone, who's too big for him, seals him on his back, the great high-low feed, as Doug talked about, Malone let, just lays it right in the hole. Last year's MVP, Malone, this year's MVP, for the fifth time in his career, Michael Jordan. And a look at their numbers. Stockton has a good look and puts the jumper down. See, they come out of that timeout, they run screen roll. They know that Rodman is not going to help off of Malone. So he set that sideline screen once again, and Stockton is an excellent shooter. Kerr to Michael as they go to the man with the hot hand. Again, single coverage by Anderson. Hornacek comes over. Michael with the up and under. Count it, and he'll come to the line with a chance to reach 20 points in the first half. Now, that's how smart Michael Jordan is. He'll get it on a low post, wait. He knows they're going to come with the double team. Okay, this time, I'm going to fake it to the baseline, and I'm going to step through and split it. I'm not going to give you the same offensive look every time. I'm going to give you something different. But, Isaiah, you teach when you come down to a double team. That defender has to come and touch the other defender, so you can't step through there. You can't give him any kind of pathway to get to the basket. You must make him spin away and shoot the shot. Kevin McHale was the master of that. I understand you teach that, Doug, but when you're coming down to double Michael Jordan, do you know how much fear is in your heart? <laughs> A three-point play, 20 points, and get this. This is the 30th finals game in which Michael Jordan has played. He has never been held under 20 points, and he's got 20 in the first half tonight. Stockton on the move. And thanks it home. What a tough shot by Stockton. They tried to run the same play. This time, Kerr forced him back into the middle. The little running wrong footer by Stockton off the glass. He's got 11. Last 30 seconds of the half. Jazz by three. Jordan. Finally missed one, and Russell collects the carom. He likes to go two for one, shoot a quick three. Not enough time for that now. Stockton's having a beautiful first half. He's controlled this first half masterfully as only Stockton can. So they'll hold it for the last one. Stockton fires. And that's again. Big first half. Just a step inside the line. 13 points for Stockton. Kukoc beats the buzzer and misses the three. Jazz led by as many as eight. They conclude the half up by five. Getting involved. You get Rodman involved in the play. You're going to see him come back now. It goes to the middle. The little runner off one foot, off the glass. And the next time down the floor, they're going to look like they're going to feed the post. Scotty gives them some space. And Stockton steps up and buries the shot to give them the five-point lead going into halftime. To give them the five-point lead going into halftime. Delta Center, where the uh, Bulls trail the Jazz by five. Bill Jackson told his team at halftime, just what you expect them. you got to stop the screen and roll. Offensively, he said they had a good tempo. They want to keep controlling the tempo. They need more offensive rebounds and expect them to double-team Michael Jordan. Look for the open man off that double-team. Let's go down to Jim Gray. All right, thank you very much, Ahmad. Well, that's exactly right. Jerry Sloan told his team he's not happy with the way they're defending against Michael Jordan. He's going to change it up here in the second half. You're going to see quite a bit of double teaming. You're going to see some better rotation. You're going to see some changes closer to the basket in the scheme. Jerry Sloan said we can't count on them missing that many layups. We've got to establish ourselves. We can't let them offensively go where they want to be. Bob? All right, Jim, thanks a lot. First shot, second half, Brian Russell. Short with a three. And Harper has it for Chicago. Luke Longley with three fouls does not start the second half. Dennis Rodman does. Ahmad 
Hendershot tells us that Rodman spent much of the halftime break dribbling a basketball, trying to loosen up that sore right thumb. Strained ligaments sustained in Game 7 against Indiana. Michael Jordan way off, so can't pick up where he left off in the first half as he scored 20. Malone over Rodman. In and out. And Harper takes it. Pippen to the hoop. Or hold. That's a combination of hoop and hold to the hoop. Don't use that, Zeke. He went there, too. He, he went any place <laughs> he wanted to go and got the hoop. Who will score the next one? Hornacek has it. It'll be Stockton who has 15. What a great pass, Isaiah, on that give and go to the top. You fall asleep a little bit. Hornacek finally gets off here with a layup. 0 for 4 in the first half. Now that's the Utah I know. Half court execution, perfect screen, back cut layup. That's the way they need to play in order to win this game. Harper into the lane. Tried to find Rodman. Poked away to Pippen, and his three is no good. Rodman with board position. Michael hits the open three and matches the number on his uniform with 23 points. The minute you start double teaming, though, what you do is you open up that offensive board, and that's the one thing Jerry Sloan has to be concerned about. They've got a defensive rebound like they did in that first half. Utah by only two. On the sec with Kuko Jonathan in the Malone, and Rodman fouled him trying to poke it away. That's only number one on Dennis. See, the dilemma is how do you defend Jordan? And when you go to trap him, that leaves Rodman on the offensive glass. Kick back to Jordan for the three. Stockton hounded by Harper. To Malone, who wants to work on Rodman. Can't hit it. And Russell can't control the rebound. It belongs to Chicago. Now, wait a minute. Steve Javi comes in and may overrule Bennett Salvatore. And apparently he does. Carl Malone using his superior strength. And Dennis Rodman does a good job forcing him to take a tough shot. Stockton takes the inbound, but Harper cuts him off. Drives the baseline, tries the reverse, and Rodman picks up a second quick foul. Now you watch Rodman, who's playing with a very tender thumb, and you see Malone comes over and whacks him on that thumb. And gets to the other end, and you can still you see him still shaking it, and it's hurting. And anytime you wear any type of band-aid or any type of tape on your finger. That's a sign and that's a signal for the other team to just take a whack at that hand. So anytime Malone or Foster or Russell get a chance, they're going to whack that thumb. Stockton hits the boat. Stockton playing in his 142nd career playoff game. No one has ever played in as many without winning an NBA title. And Malone not far behind in that category. Coach looking for help. Five on the 24. Dribbles it off his foot. And Russell, battling for the loose ball, comes up with it. Pull up jumper. Utah by six. Timeout Chicago. Stopped into the front court. Harper again on him. Luke Longley is now back into the game with Dennis Rodman, so now he's matched up against Carl Malone once again. Remember, he got three quick fouls in the first half trying to guard Carl Malone. Here's Foster, deals to Russell, drives on Pippen, and it's a tough hoop. Russell's got game. He'll take it to the basket. He'll shoot the three on you. He's a good defender. Longley inside off a nice feed. See, when you come to double Michael Jordan with size, that time Foster came to double team, Luke Longley followed him right to the basket and got the easy layup. But Jerry Sloan's not happy because Carl Malone's supposed to pick up that cutter and did not do it. Longley's first basket. Malone over Longley. Rotman has the rebound. 
trying to play through some pain. There's no question that thumb is bothering him. Chicago has baited Carl Malone into a jump shooting game. He must get back into the post. Jordan, turn around on Hornacek. Rebound Longley, and there's the follow. So Longley with a contribution here, midway through the third. Isaiah, I agree with you. They've got to establish Carl Malone down in that paint. That's where he's lived all season long, and he's been a jump shooter the entire night. Stockton to Foster, who hits the jumper. See, with the way they started the game, the first half, running, I don't know if Carl Malone lost his rhythm, and they played him out of the game. Now he's got to try to get back involved. Longley drops it off for the driving Pittman, who had to change the shot, but was good enough to do it. Stockton backing away with six on the 24. Now bouncing it from Malone, it's off his foot. But Utah's going to have it from the side. Now you watch the athleticism of Scotty Pippen on the back cut. He reverses it, hesitates in the air, hangs and banks it off the glass with touch. No foul. A Chicago player kicked it. Now we see Greg Oster tagging the game for the first time. He'll, he'll match up against Malone. It's Malone over Longley. Little bump. Doesn't get the ball on the shot, but it's tipped in by Ostertag, who takes about three seconds to make his presence felt. Well, see, he's got great size, and he's a very good offensive rebounder. He's also a shot blocker, and the Bulls are getting perimeter in, inside right now, and they need somebody in there to control that lane a little bit defensively. Michael, on the baseline, no basket. A foul before the shot. Great size in Ostertag's case is 7'2 and 280. See, Dennis Rodman had a chance to get this rebound, but he's very hesitant to stick up his right hand. You see, he didn't want to put up his right hand, and Ostertag used his body, used his size, and was able to get to tip. But you see Rodman hesitant to put that hand there. First foul on Hornacek. Bulls inbound, and it's Michael. Off the dribble, against Hornacek. Oh! Misses over. Rodman gets it to Longley, and Longley with his third basket in a short stretch here in the third quarter. It has to be a concern, only two second chance points for Chicago in the first half. That's seven now already in the third quarter. Michael Jordan has cooled off in this third period. He had 20 at the half. He has only a three-pointer in this third quarter to show through the first six and a half minutes. Howard Isley. And the Jazz need the same kind of production out of Isley in the third quarter that they got in the first half. Russell thought about a three. Pippen gets up on it. Now he lets it go. And Pippen takes the rebound. A Utah foul. Jordan had gotten back ahead of the field, but Pippen didn't see him in time, and now Malone picks up his second foul. Bob, you get a sense of frustration in Carl Malone right now. He's not getting the ball where he wants it. The Bulls are doing a very good job. They've got him out of his rhythm right now. That was just a frustration foul in the backcourt. Pippen wants a three. It doesn't go, and there's a foul on the rebound. Howard Isley picks up his second. Now you watch Scottie Pippen take a little poke right in the eye from Carl Malone, and I've been hit by Carl Malone a couple of times, and that little poke hurts. You took more than a little poke one time. 42 stitches worth, right? Bob, you are correct, sir. <laughs> Michael, just one of five in this quarter. Into the lane. Finds Harper open for three. Pippen knocks the rebound away from Ostertag, but Hornacek has it. Isley, all alone, tried to get it inside to Malone, and it was knocked away as he passes up the open jumper. Jerry Sloan was very unhappy. He thought it was a three-second violation. The Bulls got away with an extra pass, and Harper missed the three. Russell. Malone, meanwhile, 0 for 4 in this quarter and 3 for 12 in the game. They try to get it to him, and Chicago steals it. We'll 
Eagles trail by four. Pippen has trouble with the pass, recovers it. Then stepped out of bounds. I think the Jazz have to be very careful here not to try to get Carl Malone so involved that they get out of what they're doing. Howard Isley passed up an open jump shot on the break. That time, Isaiah, he tried to force one that just wasn't there that was kicked off. Isley drives by Harper, shoots on the run and banks it in. That's a great shot by Howard Isley. It's a floater right before the defender get there, gets there, so it keeps the defender off balance, and he really doesn't know when to jump. Pippen from Jordan tried to hang in the air to finish it. As it was, he drew the foul. Now you watch Isley on the little floater. He shoots it right before the defender gets there, so the defender is off balance and doesn't know when to jump, how to block it, the hesitation, the little floater. That's the old Detroit move that Jalen Rose uses with Sean Leonard. They all played on the same high school team, and they all use that same move going to the basket. Foul on Ostertag was his first. Pippen hit the first. And now the second. Scotty has 14. If they go back to that sideline screen roll, Dennis Rodman is the guy that's in rotation. He was slow getting there the last time. Russell to Malone. He takes it to the basket and scores around Longley. Trying to get himself on track offensively here. That was great ball movement, and Carl Malone did the right thing. Drive it to the front of the rim and score. Jordan. Hornacek up on him. With the left hand, he leans into the lane and tosses it home. Now, they have an illegal defense. That should be illegal offense. Because <laughs> it's just not fair. That's not fair. Hornacek with the reverse. Rodman battling Malone for the rebound. And Jordan comes away with it. Again, this one spins out. And play is stopped as they chase after the loose ball. Well, Bill Walton said earlier, part of the reason why Utah lost the final a year ago was that Malone became a jump shooter too often. Set play out of a timeout, realizing Michael Jordan overplays, pressure release, good backdoor pass to Jeff Hornacek, who makes a tough shot. And that was his first basket. Jordan, double team, gets it to Harper. Longley. Tag collects the carom. Rodman all over him, but he gets it out to Isley. Bounces to Hornacek. Two in a row for Jeff. You know, I can, I can tell Jeff Hornacek is really struggling with that Achilles because he can't get any lift. And when he goes in and make the layups, he's barely getting off the floor. But he's gutsy tonight. Utah by eight, matching their biggest lead. Pippen. Hits a two-point bucket, just a step inside the line to cut it to six. And Scotty has 16. Half of them in this period. Russell behind an Ostertag screen, into the lane, lost the dribble, and Longley claims the loose ball. Pippen behind the Longley screen, fires a three, and misses it. Rebound, Brian Russell. Nicely in the lane to Malone. Blocked by Longley, and out of bounds to Utah. Well, what a great effort that time by Luke Longley. Carl Malone ran right underneath the basket and had Rodman sealed. Looked like he had a point-blank layup. Look where he has the ball. Scotty Pippen forces him to pump fake, and Longley comes over and blocks his shot. Antoine Carr back in. Hornacek juggles the inbound pass, and Rodman picks it up. Another Utah turnover. Longley against Ostertag. Pippen, head fake on Russell. Longley has it back. 
but a whistle before the shot and a three-second violation. Jerry Sloan was pleading for it from the Utah bench and finally got it. Yeah, they caught Dennis Rodman in the three seconds, waiting for an offensive rebound. A lot of times Dennis would just run in there and stand. But, Doug, I get the feeling that Chicago is just trying to hang around, hang around until the last five minutes of the game, and hopefully Michael Jordan can take them home. Connects. Bob, set play to get a two-for-one possession. About three-second differential on the clock. Game clock, shot clock. Chicago can pretty much hold it for the last one. Just a slight overlap. Pippen finds Kukoc alone for three. Can't ask for a better look. Hornacek now has three seconds to half court where he flings it and almost connected. So Utah takes an eight-point lead into the fourth quarter of game one. Messages and a word from your local station. risk here that Phil Jackson is taking. He's resting both Scottie Pippen and Michael Jordan at the same time. Has a lineup out there that's going to have a difficult time scoring and they're down eight. Through three quarters, both Pippen and Jordan have played 33 of 36 minutes. So they need a breather and Kukoc gives them the offense that had been missing from him through most of the game. He's now just three of ten from the floor with six points. And right now it's the bench against the bench. You got Stockton and Malone out of the game, Pippen and Jordan out of the game. So we'll see who will win the battle of the benches right here. Russell, behind the screen from Carr, takes a leaner, and the bank is open for him. That's one of those, that's one of those when you're playing against him, you make him call that one. Otherwise, he can't get an H on you. the move. His pass intended for Bushler, broken up by Russell, but there's a foul. See, Brian Russell's going to drive and pump fake Rodman. He leaves his feet and leans in and gets the lucky shot off the glass to keep the lead at eight. Foul on Antoine Carr, his second. Burrell from Kerr overshoots it. Burrell concluded the regular season and began the playoffs shooting the ball very well. Had a 23-point game in round one against the Nets, but since then, his shooting touch has completely deserted him. But Burrell is not a spot-up shooter. He's a streaky rhythm shooter, and he needs touches to get his rhythm. He's not a guy that can just come in like a, like a Steve Kerr and just nail one. Here he comes up with a steal. Ostertag poked it away from Rodman, but to Steve Kerr. Rodman turns, takes the jumper, and misses it. Rebound Russell. And a chance to take the lead to double digits for the first time tonight. Carr, Rodman picks him up on a switch. His pass outside, picked off by Burrell, who's all alone. The steal and the hoop as he cut in front of Russell. And Utah wants a timeout. Carl Malone, his actual rest in terms of real-world minutes, 10 and a half. 2.23 of game time. A 53% shooter for the season. 4 of 16 tonight in game one. They may get by without their usual contribution from Carl Malone. Here's Burrell on the run, and he banks it in. Can you get a sense the Delta Center right now? It's just really uneasy. Although they're leading the basketball game, they've seen this before from Chicago. Malone, 4 of 17. See, I, thought he, I think he lost his rhythm at the start of this game. When you're a post-up player, you need touches early to get your rhythm. Burrell, he's not shy, but he misses it long. I 
wisely from Stockton. And a whistle as they try to lob it to Malone. Three-second violation once again. Malone is trying to post up in there, and they're very slow getting the ball to the corner. As they're normally on transition, they swing this ball to the corner. Malone seals his man. They throw right over the top, but they can't get the ball to the corner until it's too late. Rodman does a good job locking him up, but that time he's been in the lane too long. And now Michael Jordan's back in the game, fully rested. Shandon Anderson is on him. Morris over for help. Michael spins, throws him a wild reverse, no good. And Malone clears the boards. Here's Stockton. Isley open for three. Just short. Flat-footed rebound to Rodman in the lane. That could have been a huge basket for the Jazz. Now Kerr's out on the floor, so if you double-team, he's a three-point shooter. Stockton's got to be more aware of him. Michael is fouled before the shot. Anderson got him. That's three on Shandon Anderson. See, Michael got actually over 13 minutes actual rest, only missed a little over four minutes of the game. Stockton up on Kerr. Coup coach from Rodman. Missed it badly. Stockton has the rebound. Ahead to Anderson. And he lost it. Six minutes and 59 seconds to play in the fourth. And it's still a four-point game. Spurs up Luke Longley. Misses the jump shot. Got a post up Dennis Rodman. Fade away. Missed the jump shot. And again, stepping out and missing about the 17-foot jump shot. And you're going to see the Bulls have done an excellent job. All of his jump shots on the perimeter, only one of nine in the second half. He averaged 30 points a game in the conference finals against the Lakers, averaged 27 a game for the season. If Utah wins this game, he can probably shake it off. It wouldn't have cost his team anything, and he can attribute it to rust or just a bad night. But if they lose this game, and he thinks back to what happened in some of the crucial moments last year in the finals, it might get to him. Longley's shot was halfway down but wouldn't fall, and Malone takes the rebound. Interesting, Isley's still on the floor with Stockton. Russell for three. Way short. Chases down his own rebound and can't hit. Now, this is danger time for Utah because at the end of the game, in the closing moment, Chicago has three players that can get their own shot off the dribble, and Utah only has one in Malone. Kukoc swings it to Longley. Outside Kerr. Splits the defense. but trying to get rid of it. The Kukoc has it picked off by Russell. Ahead to Stockton. Now Malone. Malone wasn't about to miss that one. 22nd timeout, Chicago. Jerry Sloan has been pleading with his team all night long to play good team defense. A terrific sequence here. They chased Steve Kerr off his shot, forced him to put it on the floor, and were able to come it up. You see Brian Russell plays the passing lane, and then he throws the ball ahead to Stockton, and who does it better than Stockton and Malone, and Carl Malone desperately needed this basket. You're going to see the defense, Brian Russell in the passing lane, again throwing ahead, and Stockton with the bounce pass, Carl Malone with the emphatic finish to put his team up six. Bob, you can see the last few possessions, the guy who's had the open shot has been Luke Longley. Ostertag is the guy helping off. Pippen to Michael. Russell is on him. Michael back to work. Blocked away by Ostertag, but he was fouled. Foul on Russell is second. So you watch the patience of Jordan. He's looking at Ostertag out the corner of his eye, and he spins baseline. Russell reaches in when the ball is down low. You see Michael Jordan start to go to the basket right now at the end of the game to get to the foul line because he knows this is where he's going to win it or lose it. That's only the ninth free throw attempted by the Bulls all evening. Michael and Scotty, the only two guys who have shot them all night long. Michael makes one of two, just six points so far in the second half. 
after a 20-point outburst in the first 24 minutes. And during that free throw, Pippen talked to Steve Kerr, and I read his lips, and he told him that, Steve, if you're open, knock it down. Kerr on Stockton. Five-point Utah lead. Malone backing in on Pippen. Fade away. No. You know, he's getting some good shots in there. He just got some tough rolls. He took his time that time at Pippen and just couldn't make the shot. Michael into the lane. Missed it long. Rebound Russell. Malone's only basket of late was a dunk. He remains ice cold with his jumper. And Brian Russell's going back and getting some huge rebounds. Malone low blocks again, and Rodman fouled him as he received the pass. Isaiah, you know this. You're a star player. you got to keep taking the shots. He took his time this time. This is a good look at the basket. you got to think that Carl Malone, an MVP candidate this year and last year, the MVP will eventually make those shots. Eventually, they will go down for you. You just have to have enough nerve and enough heart to keep shooting the basketball. He'll take it to the basket and slam it. Utah by seven. 4.38 remaining in the fourth. You read the defense. Here's Michael Jordan. He's worried he's got a three-point shooter right here. So they step up and they run screen roll. Malone steps back, and Michael's slow in his rotation. He's worried about Russell. Nobody on the weak side steps up, and Malone with a powerful finish. The eyes of the point guard, Isaiah. I know you love that. I, I do love that because he's getting this big fella involved. He understands that Carl Malone is struggling, and he's gave him two dunks. Down by seven, here come the Bulls. Quick pass to Longley inside from Kerr, and Longley is fouled. Conventional wisdom coming into this series was that if Chicago was to get a split, which is pretty much what they seek in the first two games in Utah, their most likely victory would come in game one. Of course, in sports, conventional wisdom changes moment to moment. It's possible that Utah will win game one with their best player, Carl Malone, having a decidedly off night. He does have 11 rebounds with 15 points, but he shot just six of 20. Hey, Luke. As you noted earlier, Doug, prior to this trip to the line by Longley, only Pippen and Jordan had shot free throws in this entire game for Chicago. Kukoc out, Rodman back in. And Longley is a 90% free throw shooter, so it's vital that your big guy, if you're going to take a hard foul underneath the basket, can step up and make free throws. Longley cuts it to five. Remember, when they played the Jazz a year ago, they had Jason Caffey and, more importantly, Brian Williams, who's now with the Pistons. Those guys were so important against Utah. They don't have that kind of depth and frontcourt strength this time around. See Scotty Pippen trying to chase him out of the double team by running at the ball. Chris Morris off the glass and good. We move inside four minutes. Utah by seven. Michael, good look. And he puts it down. 28 for MJ. Now watch Scottie Pippen. When they try to get into their screen roll, he's running at John Stockton and trying to scramble the play. Stockton behind Malone's screen. Kerr chasing after him. Five on the shot clock. It's Morris. Can't hit his second in a row. And Longley clears the boards. Jordan from 20. Good again. Now when Jordan shot that shot, he turned around and made a little sound and just said, Woo, I think he's in a rhythm right now because he shot that one right through the net. It gives him 30. Longley up on Malone. He'll try the jumper again, and he'll miss it again. Pippen has it. They can tie with a three.
Jordan just screamed at Pippen. He wants the basketball. Scotty to tie. Brand new game. See, this is the moment Chicago was waiting for. They just wanted to hang around and stay close. They got people at the end of the game who can get their own shot off the dribble. You see Jordan here off the screen and roll, jumps up, takes the shot. Look at his face as he turns around. He say, I'm feeling good right now. He's coming back down the court next time. Said, okay, Scotty, your turn. Batman and Robin, let's step up. What you gonna do for me? Right here, the three-point shot to tie it up. And Scotty say, I'm with you, Michael. Michael Jordan right here. He knows that he's in the zone and he wants to take his game to another level. Scotty Pippen missed him on the pass. He had just made a J and he's hollering at Pippen, get it to me, get it to me. Even though Pippen made the three, he came back to the huddle and he's telling Scotty right now, look Scotty, I feel it. Get it to me, Scotty said, but Mike, I feel it too. Is that a competitor or what? His teammate ties the game with a three and he chews him out. Here's Stockton's pass. It goes awry. Michael pokes at it, but Stockton is there to reclaim it. Malone screening out high. Stockton returns it to him. Malone drives. Lays it up. Blocked by Rodman. Great play by Rodman at a crucial moment. Pippen, another three. This one's long, and Malone has it. When, when Malone went to the basket, he finger rolled. He's got a tomahawk dunk that ball. No flips right now. Either get fouled or finish. And Jordan came down again and told Pippen, get it to me in the post. Stockton trying to get it to Malone in the post. He fires again and finally hits one. And John Stockton looked at him and said, look, you're our guy. Take us home. Jazz by two. Rodman out to Pippen and Michael. Against Russell, looking to tie it. Can't. Rebound Malone. They come to their feet. Every last soul at the Delta Center. Stockton. Shot clock winding down. Malone has to. Two in a row. And what a time to come alive. Tonight it's been Carl Malone, but we've still got a lot of time. Chicago inbounds and Pippen takes it right to the basket and is fouled and it very nearly could have been a three-point play. Jerry Sloan can't believe it. Live it on the Utah bench. All right, now what you have to look for, when does Scotty take off and does Malone move after he takes off? I, I thought he was moving on this play. As Scotty gets in the air, you see him move and slide right up under him. Steve Jabby and Bennett Salvador both look at, looked at each other, and they both had the same call. It's definitely the right call. The replay confirms it. And Pippen swishes the free throw. See, there's still a ton of time right now. And interestingly enough, Jerry uh, Sloan is coming back with Hornacek, who sat for a long time. So he's coming in for Brian Russell. The reason is, is because he's a very good open shooter if they're going to scramble the floor. And he's also a great free throw shooter. The foul on Malone was his third. Utah is over the limit. The Bulls have a foul to give here in the last two minutes. And Chicago is right where they want to be. A chance to steal it at the end. Malone. Long way on him. Malone backing him down. Out to Russell. It's a three. And it won't go down. Jordan has it. Michael. Offensive class asked for a timeout as he's surrounded on the baseline. You saw Jordan take it hard, trying to draw the foul on Hornacek. Couldn't get the foul. He drove to the baseline, put up the shot. Scottie Pippen came in, got the rebound over Stockton. 
Michael wearing a smile as he heads toward the end line. He lives for moments like this. He's the guy who's going to throw it in. But you can bet it won't be the last time he touches it. Longley crew coach Pippen Kerr out on the floor with him. It's Scotty back to Michael. Russell's on him. Around the Longley screen. Michael dishes to Longley. Up with the shot to tie the game. Timeout Utah with 14.3 seconds, even at 79. Michael Jordan makes a great pass to Luke Longley. Remember, he trusted him in Indiana, and he hit a big shot. So Michael comes over. He gets the double coverage. He finds Luke Longley, who makes a tough shot. Leans up and under. Kisses it off the glass. And as he goes back down the floor, he looks over at Michael, and he goes, Michael, nice pass. And Michael goes, no, better finish. Saddled with fouls early, Longley comes on in the second half. Ten points, five rebounds. He shot four of six. Now remember, Chicago has a foul to give. And Into Stockton. And you see Michael Garden Stockton. Inside ten seconds. And there's the foul. It won't cost Chicago. It's on Jordan. 6.9 seconds. Now let's see if Utah wants a timeout. Interestingly enough, they got Pippen on Malone and Jordan on Stockton. Those are the two best defenders with the most speed. And if there is a pick and roll, don't be surprised if they switch it. They add a few tenths of a second, bringing it back to 7.3. Russell with Rodman hounding him. Has trouble getting it in. Delay a game, Chicago. They had one of those to give also. Bob, I'm watching guys trying to cut. We got guys holding on to each other. I mean, these guys can't even move out there. Almost daring the referees to call something in a situation where usually they're very reticent to do that. With the game on the line, the officials don't like to decide it. At this point in time of the game, no matter who's grabbing you or holding you, You've got to get open to receive the ball and make a play. Utah takes Carr out. He was in for defense. They bring Isley in. Russell. He asked for a timeout rather than risk the call. It's a 20-second timeout taken by the Jazz. Kukoc now has got to be very wary of Russell stepping in and receiving a pass back if he turns his back. Russell into Hornacek. Now it's stopped it. Out of the corner for the win. Bounces off, no good. And it's overtime in game one. Pippen, Pippen is, is arguing that the ball went up over the backboard, and there had to be at least a few tenths of a second on the clock when that happened. So if they had made that call, Chicago would have had an opportunity to inbound from half court and maybe pull off a miracle. Now you see a busted play right here. Now Stockton has to improvise. One of the greatest clutch shooters in the game. We watched him last year beat Houston. Just misses it short right there. Ball goes over the top, and he knows he just missed it. Look at him. He's leaning. Oh, I feel you, John. I feel you. We'll play at least five more minutes at the Delta Center to decide game one. The Bulls do an excellent job here of chasing the Jazz out of what they want to do. And Hornacek's going to wrap around, and he's going to catch the ball. And I really believe if he were healthy here, he would take his time. He's got a size advantage over Steve Kerr. He really gave the ball up quickly and forced John Stockton to take a tough shot. It almost went in, but you almost get a sense in this building that the, it was sort of the air went out when Stockton's shot did not go in. Well, whatever this may be worth, the road team has won the last six overtimes in the finals. Last time a home team won an overtime game in the final round was the Celtics in Game 2 at Boston Garden against the Lakers in 1984. That was the Gerald Henderson Steel game. Now, in the overtime, this is where conditioning becomes a big factor. Utah had the layoff, but were they able to stay in shape? Were they able to condition their bodies to go the length and to go the distance? Utah led by seven with about three and a half minutes to play. But the Bulls came back and forced overtime. Pippen. Rebound Russell. Here comes Hornacek. Point 
at a premium in game one into overtime, and neither team has reached 80. Five seconds to shoot. Hornacek, got to force it, and he misses it. Pippen back the other way, accelerating as Russell tries to cut him off. Jordan wants the ball against Hornacek in the post. And now he's got it. Longley, big second half. It doesn't continue. Rodman got a piece of it, but Hornacek comes away with the loose ball. Okay, two, might, two points might win this overtime right now, the way these teams are shooting and defending. Malone from Stockton all the way to the basket. Dennis Rodman a little slow in his rotation. Had he gotten there one step quicker, it would have been an offensive foul on Malone, but great execution. 21 for Malone, hooked away by Hornacek, taken by Stockton, who's chased by Jordan, but lays it in anyway, and he was fouled by Kerr. The screen roll once again. You're going to see the give and go. Rodman doesn't get there soon enough. And the gutty Jeff Hornacek, he's not right physically, but look at him reach in and knock it away from Pippen and then run the lane. And Stockton looking around with the great finish and a chance to put his team up by five. Which he does. And Stockton now has 20. Michael is bumped by Russell. See, Bob, with Michael Jordan running that high screen roll with Oster tag, you can, Stockton can't help because Steve Kerr is standing out there with his feet together. And if Stockton comes over, Michael will fan that ball out and Kerr will have a wide open three pointer. Foul on Russell was his third. He's still with one foul in the overtime. Jordan to the basket and clobbered. Oster tags third, Michael to the line. Hornacek, you know he's only playing on one leg right now. He reaches in on Scottie Pippen and knocks the ball away. And the Jazz needed this desperately, a chance to get a little bit of a cushion. The concentration and the finish by Stockton. One more coming. And a chance to bring the Bulls back to within three, with 3.05 remaining in overtime. Michael averaging 32 points a game in this year's playoffs. And stuck on 31 with that miss tonight. Let's see if they go once again to Stockton Malone, screen roll. Hornacek's the three-point shooter now. Very patient. Now fires the jumper. Longley to the floor along with Russell. And Longley asks for a timeout. When Longley fell to the floor, Dennis Rodman signaled to Steve Jabby for a quick timeout. Made eye contact with Jabby. Jabby gave him the timeout. See, Isaiah, I don't like this call at this stage of the game. I think you have to have clear possession. A lot of times what happens is guys start wrestling around, and really nobody has the advantage. Let's see if Longley really has the advantage down there. See, I think he has the ball, and Rodman signaled for the timeout. He held it for a quick second, and then Russell put his hand in. And that time, Rodman, if you can get us, he's signaling for the timeout. Rodman signaling for it right there, and you see Javi right there raise his hand up. And you know when you're playing the Chicago Bulls with 2.45 left in the game, you got to keep scoring because you know Chicago's going to score with Jordan and Pippen. Here's Michael. Has to regain control of the dribble. Now drives on Russell and can't hit it. Longley, though, pulls it down. And Michael wants that basketball back again. Pippen flips it to him. Turn around, fade away. Got it. At 33. That's amazing. What this man can do under pressure. Well, he's so smart. He knew he had Hornacek, so he went into the post. When he had Russell out on him, 
He dribbled it and took it to the lane. He knows how to use his body and his mind. Stopped it. A two-point game as we move under two minutes. Hornacek against Michael. Misses the runner, and now Chicago. I don't think that's the shot they wanted. Hornacek playing one-on-one -on -one against Michael at the end of the clock. A chance to tie it, or perhaps take the lead with a three. Five on the shot clock. It's going to be Michael. Two seconds to shoot. He's not going to get it off. 24-second violation. Now you watch Michael working hard in the post. He's trying to draw the foul, and it doesn't come. Shot clock runs out. He said, oh, I just lost track of time right there. Michael Jordan, you can see, operating in that lane, but also that mid-post area. He's been so deadly tonight, that little 16, 17-footer. Question you have here, Isaiah. Can the Jazz score? Can they get a, can they get a basket here? Because they need one with only a two-point lead. They've got to score some points here. This is a huge possession for the Utah Jazz, and it will come down to execution. Stockton into the front court, guarded by Kerr. Malone has it bounce off his leg. Loose ball. Then it's Salvatore blows the whistle, and there's a Chicago foul. I I think they're going to call Michael Jordan out of bounds here. Watch Michael read this. They're trying to step Malone out. He jumps into the passing lane, and then Michael dies for the loose ball. They're going to say his hand was out of bounds. You're right. No foul. But just as importantly, the ball to Utah. Shot clock. Seven seconds. Stockton's pass broken up and stolen by Rodman. Another key defensive play by Dennis. Michael. Hornacek has it. Michael for the tie, but a whistle. The basket will not count. Michael did not want that foul right there. He wanted the basket. He did not want the foul. But here's the steal. You watch Stockton come off the screen and roll. And Steve Kerr comes back, and he gets a hand in the passing lane. Jordan coming down. Wants the isolation in the post. The fade. Didn't want the foul on the floor, but the referee gave it to him anyway. Foul is Ponisek's second. Kukoc comes in. He'll inbound it. So they have the extra shooter in Kukoc. Longley. Oster tag up on him. Puts it on the floor. Tries to go to the hoop. Lost it. And Russell dives to the floor to pick it up. And he gets the timeout. Bob, I'm shocked. They went to a one-on-one -on -one play for Longley against Ostertag. And look, if he's going to have to dribble the ball twice, he's going to be in trouble. They knocked it loose. Chicago has had so many opportunities to win this game. You see, Longley will get the ball in the post, and he's looking for somebody to pass it to. No one will come, so he'll put it on the floor to try to go around Ostertag to try to create something. Morris gets a hand on the ball, and at this point in time in the playoffs, you dive on the floor, you get the ball, you get possession, and you call a timeout. Malone. I think you play it out. Malone throws it into Stockton. Into the front court with Kerr guarding it. Chicago doesn't have to foul because of the overlap. It's Stockton on the run, and it's Utah by four. Chicago uses its last timeout with 9.3 seconds remaining in overtime. You know what? That was good defense. The Bulls did a good job here. Steve Kerr fought over the top of that Isaiah. And you know what it was? It was better offense by a Hall of Fame player. Look at the shot that Stockton has to take. Kerr's got a hand in his face. He's on the move. That, that was just great offense by John Stockton. You can see they're going to stay with the screener. They're not going to trap it. And Stockton just makes a wonderful play when they most needed it. See, I have to ask myself this question. Why is Steve Kerr in the game right now 
guarding John Stockton when you have a better defender and Brown or Harper on the bench. At this stage of his career, at age 36, in his 14th NBA season, Stockton does not put up the kind of numbers night in, night out that he did during that great decade-long stretch where he led the league in assists, and it was a league that included Magic Johnson for a large portion of that time, led it in assists nine straight times, and was also averaging like 16 points a game. But when his team has needed it, especially tonight, with his running mate Carl Malone having a subpar night, what has he done? 22 points, 8 assists. Kukoc looking to get it in. Jordan back to Kukoc. They need a 3. And Kukoc delivers it with 5.4 seconds, bringing them to within 1 and allowing them to foul. They immediately grab Russell. Jordan does it. Shakes his hand to indicate it was unintentional, rather strategic. See, Carl Malone made a mistake there on that out-of-bounds play. He was guarding Tony Kukoc. The most dangerous man on that kind of play is the guy throwing the ball in bounds. Carl Malone lost vision where he was at, and Kukoc just stepped right in. Now, they had a foul to give. It was, of course, intentional. I meant to say that the contact, the roughness of it, was unintentional. Now, you got Burrell coming in now for Steve Kerr, who has more speed so they can possibly try to get a quick foul or either go for the steal. I'm surprised Hornacek is not in the game right now because he's one of their best free throw shooters. 4.8. Malone into Stockton. And he dribbles a bit of time off the clock before they can catch him and foul him with three seconds left and not the guy that you want to send to the line if you're in Chicago. You keep putting the pressure on, though. You extend the game. When you make that three, now what you do is you got to make Stockton make two. If he makes one, a two ties, or a three beats you. If he makes them both, the three can send the game into overtime. So still a lot of game left to be played here, Bob. They put half a second back on the clock. But remember, Chicago has used its last time out. See, they can't move the basketball. That means they got to right. throw something long. That's why if they can get both of these, it's very difficult to catch and kick out for a three. Stockton with five points in overtime. It rattles around and drops. Now what they'll do is they'll put Michael Jordan at the other end of the floor and they'll throw a home run play to him. He'll come to the sideline catch it and in one motion try to catch and shoot the three. Brian Russell's got to keep it out of his hands here. Three point lead. Who coach? Down to Michael with Russell on him. He tips it to Pippen. Can he beat the horn? He can. But he misses it and game one goes to Utah in overtime. A game they had to sweat to win with their best player having a subpar night. The home run play to Michael Jordan, and Brian Russell does a great job staying with him, and he actually knocks the ball loose, and those loose, broken plays or what sometimes beats you. You see Longley tip it back to Pippen, and they chased him off his shot, made him take a tough one, never got into any kind of rhythm. See, Doug, I think by Longley tipping that ball, it threw Pippen off his rhythm. Consequently, he didn't get a good look at it, and that's what he's really frustrated about, because when Longley tipped it the second time, he wasn't able to get in his rhythm. Jim Gray is with Carl Malone. All right, thank you very much, Bob. Carl, you struggled tonight, 9 for 25, but you hit the two big ones there in regulation. You had a lot of guts going down there. How did you have the fortitude to take those shots? Well, I didn't uh, have a good rhythm the whole night. I didn't shoot the ball really well, but it kept running my plays, and they said, hey, look, it's 48-minute ball game. So it's just one of those things where in the playoffs, sure, I would like to win, and I would like to shoot good, but in the playoffs, I don't think it really matters what your shoot percentage are. If you have an opportunity to shoot some big shots, that's what it's about. But other guys did a great job. This right here, we knew this was going to be a tough game for us. we got to win. When you guys came back over to the bench after regulation, everybody was kind of down. Jerry Sloan said, hey, guys, pick it up. we got five minutes left to play. Were you guys down, and how devastating would it have been to lose, leading by seven with three and a half minutes to go? Well, we was down a little bit, but the thing about it, they're a great team. you got to give them a lot of credit for that. And we knew that uh, 
we had to fight our behinds off to get the lead, and then they came back, which championship teams do. But then in that overtime, we kind of uh, got some baskets right off, and uh, it was a great team effort. Like I said, I didn't have the game I wanted, but uh, we won the ball game, and it's really neat. Will the rust be off uh, Friday night for you? Excuse me? Will the rust be off Friday night? I hope it will. I hope it will. Congratulations, Carl. I'll right, send it over to uh, my Rashad. All right, thanks, Jim. Somehow... John, you have the feeling that these games were going to be just like this one was tonight. Absolutely. They're, they're a championship team, and uh, we feel like we, we bring a, a tough game, too. So, uh, I don't know. We got we had a nice, couple nice leads there, and they just kept coming back. They're, they're a true champion, and we're going to have to play a lot better than we played tonight if we expect to try to win this thing. And a strategy like this, the visiting team always tries to come in and try to steal one, but you guys just would not let that happen. Well, we were fortunate. I thought we had some, had some chance. I had a chance in regulation to make the shot. Didn't do it. Uh, I didn't think we played terrifically in the, in the overtime, but we just managed to, to eke it out. Carl had a tough night tonight, but everybody else stepped up, especially you. Well, they're, they're going to try to stop Carl, just like we try to stop Michael. That, that's your first job. If you can do that, you have a good chance of beating any team. So, uh, other guys need to step up. But fortunately, a few shots fell tonight. All right, congratulations, and the battle has begun. Yes, it has. All right, thanks. Let's go back to Bob Costas. All right, Ahmad, the Bulls have now lost four straight road games in the playoffs, every one of them very close, and they trail this series 1-0. For Isaiah Thomas, Doug Collins, Jim Gray, and Ahmad Rashad, I'm Bob Costas. Pretty good opening act for the 1998 NBA Finals, and this has been the NBA on NBC.